Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today, continuing work on my French style journals. So if you are uh, joining me for the very first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy this video and if you do, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click on subscribe and the little bell so you get notifications when I do post a new video. So I will, uh, down in the description, I will put a link to this entire playlist. I think this is the sixth video. And I am working on a French style journal. I was asked if I could recreate something similar to a journal that I had already sold. And so that's what I'm doing in this series. And I'm actually working on four of them simultaneously. So in the previous videos, I introduced a new... French style digital kit that I will also have a link below. And I've kind of just been growing the list in the description of different materials and things that I have been using throughout this project. So you'll be able to find everything in each video so you don't have to hunt um, if you don't remember which video you saw it in. So today what I wanted to work on are, I'm starting a spine cover just so that I have something to work on in the evenings, different than working, you know, on the insides of this journal. So I've, like I said, I've got four going, two of them, I'm going to be adding more things inside, but we want to start working on the spine in case you've never done anything like this. I can at least help get you started and then you can kind of do the same, a similar kind of thing. So what I wanted to do is cover this spine because I don't like it and my digital kit included this fabric from this vintage book, but I need to cover up the spine and kind of a little boo-boo that I did here. So I'm hoping this will actually be the right size when I have it all ready to go. So what I wanna do for this one is to do some slow stitching. So if you've never done slow stitching before, it's basically similar to embroidery, if you know any embroidery stitches, but then there's kind of some added elements to it. So this is one of the books that I have, my slow stitching journal that I did with Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Rachel and her sister Sarah have done, and they continue to do some different slow stitching projects that go over several months. And this is the one and only that I have done. They, I think they've done, are on their second one since this one. So I will put a link down below to their channel too in case you want to kind of join in on some of those projects. They're so much fun. And this was really my first big project that I did of this type. And one of the things that I did was to do a slow stitched uh, spine cover for my journal. And basically slow stitching is taking a piece of fabric and then maybe adding patches of fabric to it. And you can add little buttons, little bits of lace, um, all kinds of scraps of things, and then just do kind of a collage. It's sort of like a mixed media collage type idea, but you're doing it with fabric and embroidery to kind of put everything together. So that's what I want to do for my journal, at least one of them, if not all of them. Uh, this is another piece that I'm doing. This was is based on a project from Ann Brooks Textiles. Uh, this is gonna end up going on a vintage bobbin, but it just shows you different materials that you can back, back it on. So you start out with just kind of your substrate, which in this case, it's quilt batting. And then in the other one, it was just some plain muslin. So you, you it, this is kind of a nice thing because it gives you some thicker, weight to work on because I'm not using an embroidery hoop. I'm just kind of holding it and stitching the things on. So uh, you can use quilt batting for the backing. This one, I'm gonna just use some cotton twill fabric. So it's a little, it's very soft on one side. It's just kind of a brushed cotton twill. And this is a little thicker. The reason I want to make sure I have something, some kind of batting instead of just stitching on this piece of cotton is I'm going to glue it to my book and I don't want glue seeping through this. So having the second layer, it's all stitched together. My glue will go on this side. So I won't have to worry about anything leaking through. So I'm going to be using this. It's a little bit thicker. Uh, if you have, if you're starting with a thicker piece of fabric, then maybe you just want some thin cotton like this or muslin just as you're backing. I went ahead and tore mine a little bit bigger than my piece because my spine of my book is actually a little taller. And so I wanted to kind of cover it a little bit more 
than my printed piece. If you watched the last video, I printed a piece of fabric from one of the French style collages, and that's what I'm gonna be using for this spine. The, the finished spine is gonna be about this wide, but I wanted to embroider this rose and the leaves and then cut them out after, cut around it, and then glue those to the front of my book cover. So I've left some material here so that I have something to work on for my embroidery, and then I'll cut it away later after I'm finished. So you'll need whatever you want to use for your spine, the, the decorative part. And again, you can do a scrappy thing with different pieces of fabric. I may end up using some of my you know, maybe I want to add little patches. This is the, the the end papers of my book, and I've printed it on fabric as well. So that way, if I want to take some little patches and do here or there, I can do that too. And then I even have the piece that I'm not going to use. Maybe I want to take some of that printed fabric and add uh, little patches of that too. So I can also add lace if I want, maybe some little buttons that sort of thing. Ooh, I lost my light. I think the power may have just went out. Okay, so we're gonna do this in the uh, just with our, our natural light. Okay, so I've got my two pieces here. The first thing that I wanna do, uh, I probably won't be doing any of the decorative stitching on camera. I may do a little bit, but that's kind of something I enjoy sitting, you know, in a in a chair and doing and that would be harder to film. So right now I'm just going to pin those together just in a few strategic places. And then I'm going to stitch this with kind of a, a hidden stitch that's going to make it kind of look like it's it's quilted together. And that way I don't have to have the pins on, on it. So I'm just going to use some uh, heavier uh, thread to start. This is upholstery thread. And some people skip this part, but this is gonna be basting that I do see. And that's just so I can get rid of these pins. So I'm just gonna pull a length of this and if I could find some scissors. And you can use you know, any kind of thread for this. I'm using something thicker because I'm not gonna leave it in. I'm gonna pull it out and it's just gonna be easier to find. I don't even need to put a knot in the end of this or anything because this is just gonna be sort of a basting to get my, actually I'll start from the front even, just to get rid of those pins so that I don't poke myself. So I'm just leaving a tail there and then I don't have to be tidy about it. I'm just gonna throw some stitches in here. But see what happens if I have these pins? My threads get tangled up. And I might poke myself, so I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to kind of go in and out. And now I can already get rid of these two. So they're just loose. They're just kind of to kind of hold everything together until I get my quilting, my hidden stitch in. So I'm kind of just going back and forth. This is the same thing that you would do if you were adding your patches already, if you were using different fabrics. You would, you know, and I'm using one solid piece, but if I was using different scraps, I would take each scrap, pin it to my substrate, and then do this basting stitch to kind of catch all of those little pieces. Um, because I just may do patches here or there, they're really just going to be decorative on the top, so I'm not going to take the time to go piece everything on right now.
Okay, so you can see I just have some basting it's just to get rid of those pins. It doesn't have to be pretty, and I'm going to remove all that. So now the next thing that I want to do is I want to do something that's going to be a hidden stitch that's going to give it that kind of quilted look, and then I can get rid of these, and that will stay, and then my two pieces of fabric will be together, and I'll be able to then start just doing my decorative stitching. So I need to grab just some thinner thread. You can use embroidery thread. Uh, you can do it a color if you want to see it. You can do a cantha stitch if it was something that you wanted to see. I've done that on this spine cover. I used some of my rusted fabric and instead of doing a stitch, and I think this is actually even just one layer because it's a solid color or just one solid piece and not patchwork of pieces. I just did a cantha stitch to instead of like a quilting kind of thing. So you can have it be decorative this next step if you want, or do the hidden one that I'm gonna show you. For this one, I'm just gonna use regular all-purpose thread. It's a little thinner, you know, it's just regular sewing thread. And because it's not gonna really show at all, it's gonna be a hidden stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and use this. But like I said, if you wanted to see it, you can do something like a, a running stitch, cantha stitch, sort of thing and then not see it and let's just get a piece of this going here okay so I'm just going to thread my needle and this is a not my grandmother taught me I'm not going to do double my threads because I want this to be as invisible as possible through my two fingers till I get till I get to the end and then I'm going to fold over so that it's double and I'm just going to roll my fingers and grab that knot and pull it to the end. And now I have a little knot on the end. And then I'm just gonna start in one corner and I'm gonna take the tiniest little stitch that I can barely see from the front. And then go about an inch and do the same thing and go about an inch. And I'm just gonna do that back and forth through this whole piece and then it'll be stitched together and then I can remove my basting. So I'm just gonna, I will speed this up so you don't have to watch me do the whole thing. So you can see I have hidden stitches. So if I actually take this out, you can't really see the stitches that one you can a little bit, but on the back, you see that I have a stitch about every inch. So I'm gonna have to sit down somewhere else and do this because it's too dark in here now and I'm my power's out. So I'm gonna stitch, finish stitching this and then I will take the basting out and then I'll start working on uh, my design kind of laying out what I want to do for my actual decorative embroidery. Maybe I'll add some patches and that sort of thing. So I'm going to have to end this video here, I think, in just a second. If you're wondering about this pad, I'm working on a uh, felt iron wool ironing pad, and I'll put a link down below for that. This is handy because you can put your needles right in it, um, and it, it's a nice thing to work on your lap when you're doing your slow stitching. The other th tool that I'm gonna be using, um, not in this video because I'm gonna have to end it, uh, is this pen to maybe draw out some uh, embroidery design that I wanna do on top of this. So this is a friction pen, it's from Pilot, and I it, it's, re it's erasable, so um, you can, get rid of the ink you know there's a eraser end on it but i think even just ironing it the heat will help to erase it too so you're going to end up embroidering over it anyway 
but it's just kind of like using a ballpoint pen to kind of lay out your design. So I'll put those two links uh, down in the description and I'm gonna continue working on my piece. So have a great rest of your day. Make a make something, bye.